Hey friends, I'm recognizing that in today's world of so much stuff online, it's a challenge. It's a challenge to tune in and I appreciate um, that, that you guys are still kind of along for the journey with the book of Philippians and, and these YouTube videos. I'm um, going to try to keep them shorter because um, I think we all have maybe just challenges with our bandwidth and how much we can handle and uh, and so we're gonna work on on uh, gonna work on trying to keep some of these weeks a little more concise and and maybe a little easier to to absorb. Having said that, it is uh, it's a good thing. It's a good thing for us to tune in together, to stay connected, um, and hopefully these are encouraging. Uh, again, feel free to have feedback, um, and and also wanted to let you guys know. Shanda put together a little website, pendrylandfellowship.com.ca. Um, dot dot and on there is a link to our, our YouTube channel as well so that you can uh, tune in that way. And just a little blurb about our little small church community. Um, it's very basic, but it's, uh, it's a good thing to kind of start having some connection and continuity and identity. And so thanks, Shanda, for doing that. I had hoped to record today up on Menzies. Up there, it is gorgeous and beautiful. Um, also, it was windy and chilly, and my dog was really noisy, and there were planes flying over. And uh, so the recording and all of it just did not work. So I'm back here. But the thing that struck me up there was just the, the, uh, the West Coast storms and how they affect those, those ridges and places like Menzies. You can find trees that are blown over where the roots are exposed and you can kind of see sometimes after storms like we've had recently there's a little bit of trauma to the forest and i was sitting there and and kind of hoping to record today's little little sort of devotion um, under this tree that had this arbutus tree that had basically dropped a branch so big during a storm that it looked like another whole tree had collapsed on the ground it struck me that this time right now is a time of, for, for many people, of a, a time of storms, um, a time of upheaval. And we've talked about this a lot. And we don't want to dwell on all the negatives, but we also don't want to be, um, I guess, ignorant of the fact that these are challenging times and there are some weeks that are harder than others. I'll be honest, for myself this week, it was a very full week. It's a challenging week. And where I wanted to go in Philippians 3, we're going to do over two weeks um, just so that we can kind of process that and we can do it well. And I'm speaking of myself in that. Um, but the second part of kind of the, the metaphor of these trees that have been blown over is that sometimes we, we really do struggle to rejoice in the midst of our storms, in the midst of our uncertainties, in the, in the weeks that are harder than others. Um, this was a week where I think there was a few people in our community that felt a little bit like the winds were strong. And, and there, was, um, there were some, some pruning, some tough times, I think, for a few of us. Just, just, um, just life, the immensity of it, the heaviness of it sometimes. And sometimes we feel like those trees that are like blown over with where the roots start to get exposed. And you really start to know yourself well when you face those times. Philippians 3 um, is kind of a switch back into Paul and his letter to the, to, the, to the church in Philippi where he gets a little more personal. He gets a little bit more talking about his, his personal history and sort of his credentials and his resume, but in a way that is really unique in that he is saying all of this, this these credentials, this resume that I have of this um, super amazing religious life I was leading and the zeal that I had to serve God and the knowledge that I had as a Pharisee, he counts as a loss. He counts it as, uh, in a sense, a write-off that he might know Christ. And those are strong words that Paul is, Paul is speaking in Philippians 3. And we'll get into that more next week because Paul is really clear that that. And I love the language he uses. Um, you know, he says, I consider this a loss that I might be found in Christ. 
sometimes we lose we ha we we lose our our uh when we go through hard times there's 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 losses there's um there's things that we have to let go of there's things we shed sometimes even in our own faith there's things we've padded around ourselves spiritually or in our in our theology to make to make things comfortable and sometimes we have things that we have to let go of um Sometimes we move to new seasons in our life that are stripped down, stripped bare, roots exposed, and we really know what we've been building on. We really know what our roots have been going and growing into. And so just thinking about some of those themes, that sometimes we do have things stripped away so that we recognize where we have been placing our hope. And this is part of what Paul is trying to say in the very first verse of Philippians 3. And he starts out, and this is why I was bringing the comparison of the storms and the trees toppling over on Menzies, because Paul's words in Philippians 3 are, rejoice in the Lord always. And I think all of us kind of, have, have, those of us that have been in the church have heard that song, we've sang that song, rejoice in the Lord always. And we kind of sometimes can just let it be said and then kind of move on. But we, but there's something deeper there that Paul is really trying to say. And I, and I just want to leave us with, a, with just that thought this week. As a bit of an intro into next week as we dig more into to the story that Paul is discussing here. But he says, finally, in verse chapter 3, verse 1, he says, Finally, my brothers, rejoice in the Lord. To write the same things again is no trouble for me. It is a, and it is a safeguard for you. Rejoice in the Lord always. And he says, and I say it again, rejoice. I don't know about you, but there are weeks where rejoicing is very difficult, where a life of gratitude is challenging, where we don't feel like rejoicing because we sometimes find that life has, is thick with the uncertainties or the challenges or the stresses. We can't often see through it perfectly when those times come. And, and Paul is saying, rejoice in the Lord always. And he says, this is a safeguard for you. That word safeguard, um, it comes from this Greek word, which is um, asphalus, which means unfailing or secure. It, it means to not, to not totter, basically. Or be cast down. There's a sense that this word for safeguard that, that Paul is, is using, it's only used four times in the New Testament, but it's this, this word that somehow in our ability to rejoice in the midst of what we can't understand about life, if we can stop and if we can still look at God as our hope, as our rock, and say, God, I don't understand why. I don't know why this pandemic's dragging on. I don't know why, you know, I'm struggling with my family relationships. I don't know why I'm going through this thing. There's, there's answers to the why that we will never know this side of heaven. But when we can reach a place where we can still rejoice, where we can still look at God and say, God, I don't understand you, but I'm going to believe you're good today. And you know, God isn't always easy to understand. And it doesn't always seem like the things we go through are, are, are nice and tidy. Um, life is messy and complicated. And Paul knew that very well, saying these words. I mean, he's not saying these words from this comfortable, easy place. He's saying these words from a place of being persecuted, where he has been beaten multiple times and put in jail. I mean, if anybody knows... Um, the struggle that we might have to still worship and call God good and and glorious in the midst of pain and struggle, it would be Paul. And so he doesn't say these words as a hollow thing. They are actually meant to be the door into finding security for our lives and our, our walk with him. Our security, this place of where we have a foundation stone under us, where that our roots can go down deep into the truth. He says, this is a safeguard for you. 
This is a secure, safe, strong place. Rejoice in the Lord always. If we can find it in us to still rejoice, to still find things to be grateful for, to still worship God even in the midst of our questions, if we can say, God, I don't understand, but I am going to lift your name today. I'm going to trust you in the midst of my fear, in the midst of my uncertainty, in the midst of my anger, in the midst of my stress and frustration. Rejoice in the Lord always. And when those storm come, storms come, when we're like those trees up on the ridge in these West Coast storms that are heaved over where their roots are being pulled up and, and where we're facing those things, um, may we be able to rejoice in the Lord always. And so I pray that that's an encouragement to you. And as we move next week into more of the detail of what, what Paul was talking about, the things that he considered a loss, that he might gain Christ, so that these words to rejoice are not hollow, and we will we'll understand the context for them a bit better. But my prayer is that, that all of us can rejoice today. That we, though we don't understand God fully in the times that are uncertain, in the times that are hard and messy, that we can believe that he is still intending his intense love for us and his grace over us and that he is writing the story of our lives with his glory in mind and his his power and his spirit and our transformation and our growth in his heart to bring us closer to him and understand him better. And those are not easy things. This is sometimes the challenge that our faith gives us. Can we let go and rejoice in the midst of these trials that we might be facing? So Father, today, Lord, we don't always feel very... Uh, celebratory with what life gives us sometimes there are hard weeks and lord i don't know all the answers to those things but lord i'm so grateful that you are the hope i'm grateful that you know us deeply and that you love us fully and we can rejoice and we can still say god you are good we will trust you carry us through this and we could be like Paul in the introduction of this new chapter in Philippians. Rejoice always. And may, it, may our rejoicing, Lord, be a safeguard for us. May it remind us of what our life is founded upon in these times. For your glory, in Jesus' name. Amen. Bless you all.